The catalyst efficiency DTCs, the P0420 and P0430, are among the most common DTCs that technicians face in the shop. How do you approach the diagnosis? Well, I've got a few ideas for you in today's Tech Tip. Today's Tech Tip is brought to you by Snap-on Diagnostics. Learn all about all the tools in Snap-on Diagnostic line using the link in the video description. The number one reason for an illuminated check engine light are the catalyst efficiency below threshold DTCs, the P0420 and P0430. And the most commonly sold part used to correct the problem is the catalytic converter. And if that doesn't fix it, then what? There are other causes that can cause the P0420 or P0430 code to be set. And even if the catalytic converter is indeed bad, odds are something killed it. And if we don't correct the cause of the catalytic converter's failure, we're just going to allow the new one to die a premature death. It all starts with a professional diagnostic approach. Here are a few ideas and tricks for you that will help make your diagnosis a little easier. It all starts by understanding how a converter can fail. One cause of failure is an overheated, melted, or broken substrate in the converter. The converters work most efficiently when the feed gases being sent to them are kept within a very narrow lambda range. That's the number one job of the ECM, to protect the catalytic converter. And if those feed gases wander outside of that range, even just a little bit, or even just a short while, the converters can start to overheat and that leads to damage. Another primary cause of converter failure is converter poisoning. Poisoning occurs when the substrate becomes coated with a foreign material, typically oil or coolant contamination. And the third biggest cause of converter failure is structural damage. Structural damage is a lot more than just a big dent in the side of the converter housing caused by road debris. Also included in this category are stripped oxygen sensor threads, damaged oxygen sensor bungs, or damaged or cracked welds at the inlet and outlet of the converter itself. So the first step in diagnosing a P0420 or 0430 is a visual inspection of the entire exhaust system. In addition to looking for physical damage, you'll also want to test the system for leakage, especially around the oxygen sensor bungs, converter welds, and any flexible tubing used. Air leaks in the exhaust can affect oxygen sensor operation, and that can affect not only the ECM's fueling decisions, but its ability to properly test the catalytic converter for efficiency. After all, it's using the oxygen sensor signals to do just that. One way you can check for leaks is to use your shop vacuum to pressurize the exhaust. Simply swap where the vacuum hose connects and attach the end to the tailpipe, sealing it with duct tape if necessary. Turn the vacuum on and use a soapy water mixture and look for the bubbles. If there's no physical damage present, the next thing I like to do is to use a thermal imager or IR temperature gun to check the operating temperatures of the converters. This is the Snap-on Thermal Laser, a unique tool that combines thermal imagery and an infrared temperature gun in one tool. The IR thermometer provides accurate readings up to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, important as you'll see in a moment. The conversion process produces heat so if we measure the temperature of the exhaust gases entering using the inlet weld ring, they should be cooler than the gases leaving the converter, and we can measure that at the outlet weld ring. Now just a word of caution here, because of the different wall thicknesses and construction designs, this isn't 100% dead on accurate. Keep that in mind and only use this test to confirm a good converter, and don't use it alone as a means to condemn one make sure that the engine is fully warmed up and running. 
Let's use the thermal laser to measure the temperature of the pipe just ahead of the converter inlet at the weld ring. The weld ring is the point where the inlet pipe is welded to the converter body. Most converters will start to function when they reach about 350 degrees Fahrenheit and are fully lit when they reach about 500 degrees Fahrenheit. If the converter can't reach this temperature, it could mean that the converter has failed or it could mean that the feed gases going to the converter are not what they should be. Next, point the laser at the outlet pipe weld ring and measure the temperature there. Calculate the difference between your readings. The temperature at the rear weld ring is an indication of how much work the converter is doing. In some cases, it can be as 150 degrees Fahrenheit greater than what we measured going in at the front weld ring. If the outlet reading is higher than the inlet reading, you can be assured that at least some conversion is taking place. On well-tuned later model vehicles, the catalyst can be fully functional at only a 20 degree Fahrenheit difference. So only use this test to confirm a good converter and not to condemn one as failed. Typically, converter temperature won't exceed 1200 degrees Fahrenheit on a properly running engine but on an improperly running engine where the feed gases are not as they should be, temperatures can get much higher than that. Periodic peaks over 1600 degrees Fahrenheit can lead to damage of the substrate, reducing the catalyst efficiency and causing its premature demise. That's where the range of the snap-on thermal laser comes into play, especially in identifying a cat suffering because of an engine or fuel control issue. A bronze blue rainbow discoloration of the shell typically indicates elevated temperatures. Excessive temperatures can reduce the converter's durability or if high enough, destroy the converter's matting or substrate. Damaged matting and melted substrates typically occur at temperatures exceeding 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. It's possible to test for a cracked substrate or damaged matting by tapping on the converter housing using a rubber mallet. Thump the shell and listen for loose components. Restrictions in the converter resulting from broken or melted substrate can also be seen on your thermal imager as cold spots displayed within the converter shell. Now I used to believe that you could remove the upstream oxygen sensor and use a borescope to visually inspect the condition of the substrate. Well that might help you see if it's poisoned or not coated with some foreign material but if there's any melting or damage to the substrate, that generally occurs near the middle or end before it gets to the front. So if your customer complaint is also accompanied by a low power or sluggish response concern, perform a volumetric efficiency test to give you an idea of whether there's any restriction in the exhaust. And if your testing kind of leads you to believe that the converter is okay, well then consider looking at the ECM inputs. Make sure that all the sensors are providing the correct information and that the ECM is able to maintain fuel control. And don't forget, check those technical service bulletins. You'll be surprised to find more than one that uses a reflash to correct a P0420 or P0430. I hope these tips will help you the next time that you're facing a P0420 or 0430 DTC. But remember this, the first thing is to verify the condition of the catalytic converter. Is it truly good or bad? And if it's good, we need to find out why the ECM thought it was bad and address that issue. And if it is bad, we need to find out what killed it before we just go hanging a new one on. Now, if you'd like some more information about the snap-on thermal laser that I used in today's video, I'll have a link for you in the video description, as well as one leading to their snap-on diagnostic tool line, and I invite you to check that out. And as always, thanks for watching.